Module 1.2, Defining a Discount-Driven Customer and a Loyal Customer. So you'll notice in the previous lesson, there was no mention of a discount-driven customer. That's because somebody looking for a discount and not loyal to your brand isn't really considered a customer. I think a proper classification of a discount-driven customer is a visitor. They might only patron your business when you have a sale, or they might always ask for a discount before purchasing something. A discount-driven customer is always looking for a deal, is not brand loyal, is not business loyal, won't pay full price on a consistent basis, and does not refer businesses or share positive brand experiences, but they will share a deal. They might shop your store frequently, but make their decisions based on your markdowns, and they're the most likely people that will return products. In 2009, I opened the fourth location for my salon chain. It was in Silicon Valley, about two to three hours away, depending on traffic from the other nearest location. And while I knew some people in the area, we didn't have a customer base there. I picked a great storefront location in a very upscale neighborhood and turned the key and unlocked the doors. We didn't attract the clientele we needed. This was back during the heyday of Groupon and the other daily deal sites, and I dove right in. I figured we would get customers in the door and they would magically become loyal customers. Actually, I didn't even think it that far. I just thought about giving getting customers in the door. We ran these deals for about six months solid and it was great at bringing people in but not retaining them. I was working the front desk at that location one day and realized at the end of the day, not one single person that called to book an appointment had booked at full price. And not one person that came in for an appointment that day had paid full price. When I got home that night, I looked at all the future bookings and they all had a discount code associated with them. There was even one person that hung up on me after I said no that day when she asked if we were running any specials. So I knew I had to stop this cycle, but I wasn't sure how to stop it. I made some decisions to end all the daily deals, and I told the staff, my staff the next day that when the deals ran out, it might be three to four months before somebody walked through our door for an appointment. I really wasn't sure what was going to happen, so we quietly shut off all the deals, obviously honored outstanding pre-purchase certificates, and for the first month, the only time the phone rang, it was somebody looking for a discount. They couldn't find one online and wanted to see what we were running. It took about 30 days. It took about 30 days for customers to come back, frustrated that they couldn't get the same quality of service elsewhere, and they were finally willing to pay full price. Within four months, we had our highest grossing month of that first year in business at that location, and had taken the first step into building a loyal clientele. So I can tell you that a loyal customer is happy to pay full price, will always purchase from your business, barring unforeseen circumstances, they will share their experiences and let friends in on secrets, and they're probably 20% of your customer base, but make up 50% of your sales. To create a loyal customer, it's important to avoid discounts, look for ways to add value, understand your customer's behavior, and it will take time and patience. Naturally, you need to communicate with these customers regularly by telephone, mail, email, social media, and more. These people are the ones who can and should influence your buying and merchandising decisions. Nothing will make a loyal customer feel better than soliciting their input and showing them how you value it. The truth is you can never do enough for them. Often, the more you do, the more they will recommend you to others and positive word of mouth is gold for business.